Thompson M1A1. It's going to be a good day. Right, the Thompson M1A1 submachine gun. This gun has been used all over the world in various conflicts. Um, very early machine gun design by uh, John Thompson, as early as, as I believe 1917. This particular gun is an auto ordnance uh, produced machine gun. Uh, these were produced uh, after the war on up to, to pretty late. Um, obviously the early machine guns seeing a lot of uh, use in the prohibition era Obviously guys like uh, Dillinger and um, Babyface Nelson and, and all of the gangsters back in the day used to use the Thompson to uh, good effect against law enforcement. Of course, the law enforcement back in the day, uh, they were using the Thompsons quite a bit to uh, combat the drug dealers at the time and all the organized crime uh, syndicates. So it's a very famous machine gun. It's probably one of those machine gun designs that in terms of the silhouette of it, it's probably one of the most noticeable machine guns out there. I mean, when you see the silhouette, you know it's a Tommy gun. Uh, in terms of uh, nicknames, uh, people call them choppers, Chicago typewriters, or just a Tommy gun. Uh, most people I know call them a Thompson, but uh, they're known by a variety of different names. Bonnie and Clyde were shot up pretty good with one of these when they were ambushed. Uh, I believe it was in Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken, where uh, Bonnie and Clyde uh, Barrow were ambushed. Uh, they were using Browning automatic rifles, Thompsons, Remington Model 8s. So uh, yeah, they got shot up pretty good. And if you see the uh, photos uh, from that scene, uh, that car got peppered pretty good. Of course, one of the uh, most famous uh, expeditions that the Thompson has made over the years is World War II. Uh, they were used extensively in World War II. In fact, this exact configuration uh, was used quite extensively in World War II. Uh, kind of a commando-sized uh, Thompson with the shorter barrel. Uh, this particular model is a later model. The charging handle is on the right side of the receiver. The early guns, like the 27 Deluxes from 1917 and on, all of those guns had the charging handle on the top. All right, and it is a reciprocating charging handle. So when this thing fires uh, from the open bolt position, the charging handle rides along with the carrier. Very simple machine guns to produce. Um, during the war, there was a shortage of Thompsons. Uh, they were generally issued to officers, NCOs, uh, several of the Joes uh, had Thompsons as well. They did develop the grease gun. Uh, the M2 grease gun uh, was designed to supplement soldiers with the 45 caliber submachine gun uh, just because they couldn't produce enough Thompsons. Obviously the Thompson being a better produced machine gun than the grease gun, but the grease guns uh, saw their fair share of service as well in the Pacific. Uh, in the European theater, in Italy. Uh, they were used pretty much all over the place. Uh, the Germans, uh, any of the soldiers we fought against, they really feared the Thompson because you had 45 caliber punch, full automatic, and uh, man, this thing was just a terror on the battlefield. In the proper hands, uh, a soldier could really be a surgeon with one of these guns. Uh, hopefully we're about to demonstrate that in a few minutes here. This particular gun was a post-war uh, gun. Auto ordnance did make them, um, you know, for the military during the war, but this particular version, because of the serial number and then the late style uh, charging handle, this model likely did not see service in World War II. However, models very much like this saw service in the war. Uh, Winston Churchill was also a very big fan of the Thompson. The British made very, very extensive use of the Thompson. Contrary to what people think, uh, obviously, yes, the British did have a wide variety of uh, machine guns and submachine guns that they used during the war, um, but the Brits that were able to get a hold of the Thompson, mostly your SAS soldiers that were dropped behind enemy lines, were often armed with uh, suppressed stins, and many of them were armed with grease guns and Thompsons. And the uh, British, um, they really did think very highly of the Thompson just because of the, uh, the big bore stopping power. Um, a Thompson is just a really, really awesome gun with a lot of power. I mean, you're talking a 20 or 30 round stick magazine, full automatic, and uh, you really can't argue with a 230 grain ball slapping you at 900 feet a second. Hopefully you learned something about the Thompson that you might not have known. 
and we're definitely going to shoot some things for you. Stick around. It's going to be awesome. All right, we're going to shoot the M1A1 Thompson on semi-auto. I'm kind of curious to see what the accuracy is like. We'll run a couple of uh, shots on burst or controlled. It's pretty much full auto otherwise. We'll see how it does. All right, well, the Thompson's running so nice on semi-auto, I think we're going to make some short work of uh, remaining soda bottles out there, shoot this thing a little bit more, and we'll wear some stuff out on full auto as well. Very controllable gun. There we go. <laughs> Got our groundhog there, didn't we? <laughs> oh yeah. Man, if you don't get a machine gun grin from shooting that, there's a problem. All right, I'm gonna try some control bursts on these uh, steel plates here with the Thompson. See how she runs. Oh yeah, beautiful gun. Appreciate you guys watching our video on the Thompson M1A1 today. We had a lot of fun making it. This is an awesome machine gun and I was really lucky to be able to get my hands on it to do a video for you today. Uh, this thing runs like a champ and uh, I can definitely see where in World War II, if you were a soldier armed with this thing, you would definitely not be unarmed. Um, you know, very capable gun on semi-auto and full auto. It was a real joy to get out here and shoot it today. So thanks for watching guys. We got more machine gun videos on the way. Much, much more to come. Probably going to get a little bit bigger and crazier with some of the guns we're going to be getting out. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, check us out next time.